Hey guys, how you doing? It's Kevin Tech here bringing another video on information technology. I hope you're having a good day. Happy Saturday. And today I want to go over uh, someone that I work with. This was like a few years ago. This is now like recent. But I want to go over uh, how they went from working help desk to getting a job in Knock and then transitioning over to cybersecurity. Obviously, new, make sure you know what to do. Rate, comment, subscribe, give me a thumbs up. Really appreciate it. All right, so I'm going to share my screen. Um... And I'll go over this real quick with you guys. So let me share screen. Uh, share screen. Share. So this is a story about this is a, this is a based on a true story based on someone that I work with. So uh, back in 20, 2022, I ran an internship where I actually train you for free, and I cover like hands on training. I train you on certain things. So um, here's a background on this person that I work with. So this person just graduated college. Uh, they were literally like brand new. They had a computer science degree. Um, they had no experience, no certs, no real, real hands-on training. So he wanted to get his first job and help desk. So he reached out to me directly on Discord and uh, he wanted mentoring for me. And at the time, I was doing it. I was doing an internship where basically you get training with me for free. I don't do that anymore because it's very time consuming. I stopped doing that because I have I have other things I'm working on, so I won't be able to do that anymore, at least for now. So I ended up doing training with him, and I did train him actually. So he reached out to me on Discord, and what we, what did we focus on? So we worked on our the first thirty to sixty days. We worked on fundamentals. So I, I I actually told him to look at the A plus book, which he did. And I told him to learn about um, operating systems, learn about hardware, learn about Linux, learn about networking, how things talk to each other, how, how TCP IP works, IPv4, IPv6, learn how a computer gets an IP address, uh, learn about uh, Windows. At that time, it was Windows 7. Uh, and then it was closing in on Windows 10 back then because we were, we were changing from 7 to 10. And I'm talking about learning about 7, because 7 is still around, and then 10 is also going to be the newer version, so you have to learn about that. And obviously, Windows 10 has different versions of Windows 10, so you have to learn how to do that. So I had to make a virtual machine on Windows 10, which he did. And then for hardware, for hardware, what I had him do was he, he had a desktop. I had him open his desktop. So he gets experience on hardware. So I, I, literally, talk, like I literally did a call with him. Just like I'm doing a call right now, or like I'm doing a video call right now, I literally did a call with him. Uh, he shared his camera, and I told him open up his computer, which he did. And we had a we had a one on one video call, and basically, we literally went over each individual part of the hardware of a computer of a desktop, specifically his desktop. We went over memory, RAM, CPU, graphics card, uh, a motherboard, what's the CMOS battery, how does the CMOS battery work. All like basic hardware, hardware troubleshooting stuff, just basic generic hardware stuff because he, he has no experience. So like he wanted to learn about that. So I was like, all right, let's go over that. So we went over fundamentals. It's, it literally took him about 60 days to like have a great understanding on basic stuff. And I'm not saying to be a master or be like a pro, but like he actually knew basics now at this point. Like he knew like he knew about fundamentals, which... If I go over something with you and you know fundamentals, it's a lot easier for you to understand what I'm talking about versus you having no experience, if that makes sense. So after that, we we talked about uh, getting the A+, plus, which we did. So my next slide was about getting the A+. Plus. So we actually worked together. I gave him some resources to study the A+, plus, which is what he did. Uh, he used Professor Messer, Mike Myers, and he used Jason Dion on Udemy. So Jason Dion has a Udemy course. For a plus, he took the exam. He took the resources, and I had him uh, watch some videos on YouTube. There's a lot of resources out there on YouTube. Uh, while he was doing that, I literally had him read the CompTIA book and then just use like a highlighter and just highlight important stuff in the book. I also had him download the CompTIA objectives. So it took him about two months to get the A plus. While he was doing that, I had him post. I had him post every single day on stuff he's studying and stuff he's working on in A+, because a lot of people tell me all the time, like, I have nothing to post on LinkedIn, which is not true. You always have something to post on LinkedIn because whenever you post something, you got to remember that 
there's always someone behind you. Like, like there's someone always in front of you that's ahead of you. There's always someone behind you as well that's trying to do what you're doing. So if you post something on LinkedIn, you become a resource and you actually help the other person that's behind you, if that makes sense. So you could post about anything where you anything you learn APV, IPv4, uh, incident protocol, uh, uh, ports, services, uh, things you things you need to know for your A plus exam. Whatever you post is useful for anyone that's that uh, is actually following you. If that makes sense. So I told him to talk about that, which is what he did, and people actually find him resourceful, and he actually got a lot of followers on LinkedIn because of that. Uh, and then that's it. And then, then the following slide, which is what I told about, is like what I talked about is getting your A plus, which is what he did. He literally scheduled an exam because I always tell everyone to schedule their exam. That way you stop procrastinating because what happens is you you don't schedule the exam. You know, oh, I'll do it later. I'll do it later. I'll do it later. And then you never do it at all. So I had him schedule his exam. So it's kind of like I have. It's kind of like you have to pass it or or you or you don't pass it, right? Kind of deal. So he actually took the exam and he passed both the first exam and second exam. And this is, this is not the 900 series. It's like the 1101, 1102, something like that. Um, so he did that. And um, he actually posted his certification on LinkedIn, which is what I told him to do. And like, if you're going to get, if you get a certification, any type of cert you get, you should post it on LinkedIn. Just to show the hiring managers and job recruiters what you're working on and what you have, if that makes sense. So he posted the certification on LinkedIn and um and then that's it. And then after he got his A plus, uh, I'm like, all right, now you're ready to learn with me because you have that experience, you know what you're talking about, you know what you're doing, you took the A plus, you have fundamentals. Now I can actually train you on this stuff. So let's learn some stuff. So we did Office 365 training, we did active directory training, we did multi-factor authentication training. We did mobile device management training. And then we went on, we went about learning troubleshooting stuff. How do you troubleshoot a hardware issue? How do you troubleshoot a software issue? What changes do you make on a computer if someone's having this weird this weird issue? So I gave him like scenario type uh IT issues where he would remote into my machine and I would pretend I'm the customer. I would be an upset, uh upset, angry customer, and you have to figure out how to fix the problem. So I did that with him. Then I told him to learn SSCM. Because obviously, as a CM, you need to know how to image machines, and you need to know how to deploy applications as well. So we, he was using my PDQ, my help desk playlist as well, to get him some experience. And um, he used Service Service Now and Jira to learn about ticketing systems. And then after that, I told him to start applying for jobs. And it, it literally took him two months to get a job. He applied on LinkedIn. He applied on company websites. He talked to job recruiters. He got four job interviews. I did a mock interview with him before the actual interview, and that's how that was that was how he was able to land the job successfully. The other thing I told him to do, which is very important for anyone that's watching today, is make sure if there's a job posting you see and you see a job you want to do, make sure that job is up to date on the website. So sometimes uh, recruiters are lazy. Not to talk bad about recruiters, I like recruiters, but the thing is sometimes they're lazy. They don't update the website, or they don't update their LinkedIn job posting. So the job has already been taken and they haven't updated it on LinkedIn. So you have to go directly to the website to see if that job is still available, if that makes sense. So that's the, that's what I told uh, this gentleman to do, which is what he did. Uh, and he was able to land the job. So he got his first job and helped us. He stayed there for the company for about a year to wait to see if there was like opportunity to grow or they give him a chance to move to a different department. Because with me, like, I don't like to burn bridges. I always tell everyone, don't burn bridges with your hiring managers or your job recruiters or your direct, whoever you're working with, don't burn bridges with them. So uh, the manager really, the manager was realistic when they listen, man, I don't have anything for you right now. And even if you do get certified, you're not, we're not going to be able to give you a job. We have nothing right now. We have no money and we have no departments to move you into. So unfortunately, you're going to have to look for another job. So surprisingly enough, his manager was very supportive of him. So his manager actually put, his manager told him to put him as a reference, which is what he did. Um, and then um, within a year, he got a CCNA. He was studying the CCNA while being in help desk. And he, he reached out to me because he wanted to do networking. So I told him, oh, uh, take your CCNA and then look at knock roles, look at knock jobs. And he got this, he got, he did apply, he changed his resume. So I'm gonna go to the next slide. So he did change his resume to a more of a network admin resume. 
Uh, and I told him to buy a, a cheap Cisco router on eBay, which is what he did to like learn about Cisco routing. Uh, he learned Cisco Packet Tracer, started doing labs in Cisco Packet Tracer. And then he added his new skills on the resume. And he started applying for jobs, which is what he did. And he got his first job in Knock. So, and he had like really odd hours because Knock is sometimes is really weird. So he was working from um, the evening till the morning, if that makes sense. Like the evening, like, like 8 p.m. to like 2, 3 in the morning. It was like a weird, it's a weird schedule, like till like the morning. I'm like, I'm like, that schedule is super weird. And he's like, oh no, it works for me, Kev. They're paying me good and it works for me. I'm like, all right, that's whatever floats your boat, right? As I always say. So, If that's what you like to do, then that's good for you. So he ended up working there for a bit. Um, and then he wanted to go into cybersecurity. So the next slide is actually about what he did in cyber what he did to land a job in cybersecurity. So he got certified. Um, he got his security plus, and uh he started doing blue team stuff using Microsoft Sentinel. So I you guys don't know, like Microsoft Sentinel does have training. Um I gotta look for it. I know it. I know they have training. So, yeah, here we go. I I I found I found it. Uh, they do have Microsoft training. I found one of them. Uh, let's see. So there there is a there is videos on YouTube. So there there's a Microsoft has their own website for training. Uh, I'm gonna put it on. I'm gonna put it below of the video description so you guys can look at the website. They do have training. I just found it, but yeah. So he learned about this. He changed his resume. More blue teaming. I told him to look at. I told him to look at Cyberwalks. I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with Day Johnson, but Day Johnson has a blue team resume, and then Textual Chatter does have a blue team resume as well. So I told him to look at those two channels, which is what he did, and then he changed his resume, and he started applying for jobs. And I told him to get exposure to the CIA triad, learn about common vulnerabilities and exposures, learn about NIST, because they're gonna ask you questions about that. That that was been that has been my experience in cyber. Um, based on other people that I have worked with, they're like, oh, they ask you some some questions about vulnerabilities, CVEs, the latest CVEs, the latest vulnerabilities, things like that. So um a recruiter actually reached out to him because he was super active. He was super active on uh on LinkedIn. So he got his first job in cyber because he was active on LinkedIn. So he posted, he got his security plus, and then he posted his Microsoft Sentinel lab on, on LinkedIn. And um, recruiters were reaching out to him for like a entry level sock roles. Like they just, they just require security plus and they require some network admin experience, which is what he did have along with some help desk experience, which is what he did have. And he ended up getting a job as a SOC analyst role. That's literally what happened. So he did he did three job interviews. Questions were on CVE, NIST. How do you stay up to date with tech? How do you handle ransomware? What is a playbook? How do you how do you do training with customers and social engineering? And it's a bunch of soft skill questions for what he told me. Um, and then he was able to land a job. That's literally what happened to him. Um, and last but not least, like the... Important thing to note here with this person's journey is that each person's journey is different. It took him almost two and a half years to land a job in cyber. IT is a journey, so you need to have patience. Uh, learning takes time and everyone learns differently. So that that is for me, that's it for me in the slides. So this guy did get a job in cyber. It took him about two years, roughly two years and change. He got a job, but it was like, it was very time consuming, if that makes sense. It's not like, it wasn't like super fast. Like people, some people that are brand new, oh, I want to go into cyber. It's, you know, it, it takes time. And that's literally what happened with him. So he went from A plus to CCNA to security plus. The, the company that he reached out to him, they wanted someone that already has a strong networking background, which is what he did. He, had, he worked at NUC. So he has a strong networking background, along with like some help desk stuff which is what he did have as well. And he was able to land that job because of that. So I'm not sure if anyone here finds this interesting or maybe it's useful for anyone, but maybe this is helpful for you guys if you're trying to get into IT or cybersecurity, but hopefully this helps you out. With that being said, I hope you guys have a wonderful day and have a good Saturday. Take care. Bye.